Hi, I want to show you how to make face masks from t-shirts. Uh, you can make a very basic face mask, this style, made out that's a rectangular shape, or one that um, is bigger, made from the sleeve, that can cover a N95 mask, disposable mask. This is a very simple, easy to sew, that's very uh, quick design. It has a drawstring on the side with ties. Uh, the drawstring casing instead of pleats, it's much quicker to sew and you can get an adjustable fit and the ties are also have offer adjustable fit and they uh, won't dry out in multiple washings like elastic would. So the goal of making these from t-shirts too is everybody has them at home and it'd be ideal if you can make up a whole bunch of them to use so that you always need a clean mask each time you wear it. Um, wearing a dirty cotton mask can be worse than wearing no mask at all, and especially in a healthcare setting, so you really want to wear clean ones. Um, from one t-shirt, you can get up to four large masks and two smaller masks, plus one um, uh, cover from the sleeves. Or if you only want to make the covers, you can get four to five uh, covers from one t-shirt, uh, five from extra large size t-shirts or uh, bigger. The width of the t-shirts is what's important because it needs to be wide enough to go over the 95 mask. I mean this is a different, this style of mask is pretty wide underneath here. Um, I'll show it to you later. Some of them are smaller so this is to fit over that wider size. They also um, have insert pockets, so um, on the rectangles there's either a envelope style insert pocket where the insert goes in, or on the smaller ones they're just folded in half and the pocket opening's right at the top. And when you put that pocket opening and stretch it across the top of the, the face, that'll keep that opening closed and it's much easier to insert that um, filter. The N95 also has a pocket in it for a filter. And uh, for healthcare workers, if you do have to reuse your masks and put them on, take them off and put them back on, some are liking to have a different color on the back, so you can actually mix two different t-shirts here, maybe a big large one for the outside and a smaller one for the inside and make your masks two-tone so you know which side is the front and which side is the back. But these masks, they do have the drawstring folding um, that goes on the back and this envelope opening on the back, so that also helps you ID which is the front and the back. Uh, these are sewn uh, either with machine sewing or you could do the sewing by hand using a whip stitch. So if all you have at home are t-shirts, some thread, a needle, and scissors, and a safety pin to help you push the um, ties in through, you can make a mask for yourself, even if you don't have a sewing machine. Uh, you can do this same design from cotton fabric. This is a cotton fabric that has a flannel layer and an outside cotton, and I've used a ribbon for the ties, and it also has the pocket that you can put a filter in. So you can make this from normal cotton fabric, but today I'm only going to show you how to make those from t-shirts. So we're going to uh, start with this, and um, please sure, be sure to watch the end. I'll give you some tips on how to sanitize these and ways to uh, reduce contamination because you don't want uh, dirty masks making you uh, sick. Um, a dirty mask can be worse than wearing no mask at all in a healthcare setting. For our face mask we want to use short sleeve t-shirts that are medium to heavy weight. 100% cotton is best, it's most breathable, but a cotton blend is also okay. And screen print designs are okay too. We'll just cut around those. For the side seams, a tubular knit is best. That means it has no side seam whatsoever, but if you do have a t-shirt that has a side seam on it, that's okay, especially if it's uh, a straight side seam, that'll work best. 
I'm first going to show you how to cut a t-shirt to get the basic face masks. First you need to cut both sleeves off along the, the armhole seam and then you need to remove the bottom hem below the stitching. Now you can uh, also cut that stitching away and discard that and save the bottom fold of the hem to use for a tie for a face mask cover made from the sleeves. But the only part we need to make this style mask is the body of the t-shirt. So you want your t-shirt to be smooth, wrinkle free. You can iron it if needed. You want the side seams to be folded straight and then you want it folded in half vertically. Then you want those side seams even and that bottom cut edge even. If you need to retrim it, that's fine. Now it's ready to cut into the face masks. So here's how to cut up the t-shirt to get your four large masks and your two small masks. So first we took those sleeves off, both those sleeves, and that hem fold, and then that was the stitching of the bottom hem of the t-shirt. We don't need that. But save that fold and those sleeves to make uh, N95 mask cover if you want. But this is basically the tree shirt body. So we folded it in half. And so now we've got uh, four layers of fabric here. Um, we're going to cut our larger masks from the bottom part of the t-shirt because sometimes there are screen print designs or a pocket up there that we want to avoid. So we want to cut the mask 12 inches long and the direction the mask lays is actually this way. So um, the line, the grain line of the t-shirt goes this way, so the top and bottom go this way so that it can stretch nicely over the face. So we want 12 inches, that's going to be wide enough to do um, a double fold casing on the back. If you can't get 12 inches, you can go as uh, low as maybe 10 inches and then just do a single fold casing instead, which is what we do on the smaller masks. And then the width is going to be however wide your t-shirt is, folded into quarters. So after you've cut this, again at 12 inches, you're going to need to cut along the folds um, and the side seams in order to separate out those four different layers. So there are four layers. The next part is to cut the strips. So these will become ties for the masks. You want to cut them each about one inch wide and cut four of them. These will end up being uh, large loops that we stretch and end up looking like this. And we'll cut on one side and then cut a halfway from that other side and get a pair of ties for the mask. So that's the four pairs of ties and four large masks. So the rest of the mask, those two smaller ones, come from the top, what's left of the top portion. So the first thing we need to do is separate the back side from the front side. That's the front. You can tell the neckline's lower. So first you need to cut along that top shoulder seam and cut, if there's anything left of that side seam, cut that. And then you need to refold each part. You separate out the front and the back and refold each part. From the back is where we're going to get our large rectangles um, to make the mask part. Um, so you want to make them as wide as possible up to that armhole seam and as tall as possible up to the bottom of the neckline binding. And then there are, you need to cut that fold here on the back to make two layers. And then from the front, we're going to cut some strips for uh, the ties. We cut four of them this time because um, there's only one layer here, so we need four. So that's going to be a pair, and that's going to be a pair. And those will be the ties for the small masks. To sew the larger masks, we're going to use an envelope fold, which has this flap opening. And we're going to double fold the sides for the casings. 
and we want it to be about nine inches long by at least five inches tall at the end, but uh, sizes will vary depending on how wide your t-shirt is. So we cut that strip for the tie and then that larger rectangle for the mask. So this tie is strip is just one big long loop. So in order to make it into a long tie, just go ahead and stretch it. And then we'll go ahead and cut it in the middle, then fold it in half, then cut that end. Now we have the pair of ties that we need for the mask. And then for the mask, we need to turn the right side, the up, the inside out. So we want the wrong side up. And you can tell the wrong side because with knits, because it kind of curls towards the wrong side. And you want the direction the t-shirt was going up and down, sort of this way, to get the right grain and stretch for the mask. I'm going to fold up that bottom part about four to four and a half inches and then fold down that top until the width here is at least five inches. The here I've got five and a half but you want at least five inches. And then we're going to fold our side casing so you fold once and then you fold twice and then you just stitch a line close to that inside fold. So the casing itself, when you fold it double, is about three-fourths of an inch wide, and the casing line is about five-eighths of an inch. But just use whatever width you get when you fold and fold again, depending on the thickness of your t-shirt. So now we've got two casings, and we need to put our tie inside. So get a large safety pin and then put it through the very top of the tie. Go through twice to secure it so it doesn't pull out and just hit the very top of that tie. Don't put too much extra on here. It'll bend. And then use this. Probably best to go down this way since that top fold is right there. It will go through easier. And then put your tie through the casing. And then you want to position the tie so that the halfway point is here at that top seam. So just pull the tie, put the ends together, and pull until that halfway point is there. Pull this one till we get that halfway point there at the top. And then the last step is to sew across the very top that where that halfway point is. So across the casings to secure that tie so it doesn't come out during washing or if you pull too hard when you tie. And then you want to knot the ends of the ties so that it makes it easier for the wearer to find the end of the tie when they want to untie their mask. And that is the large mask. To make the smaller masks, we're going to just fold in half with a top opening and just fold the casings over once for a single fold casing. The final size is going to really vary depending on how big your t-shirt was. This one's about eight inches long and about four and a half inches tall, but it could be anywhere between four to five inches tall and this width will vary too. So this will be a smaller one, probably better suited for uh, a child. So we had the strip 
and then that smaller rectangle to use. First for the strip we need to pull it to make the tie. This strip is from the top of a t-shirt and it has a screen print and that's okay for a tie. So you just need to pull this to make the tie. And the final size of the tie here is doubled that, so it's about 24 inches for the small size. So you need it, you know, test fit your head to make sure it'll fit your, um, the head that you want it to fit and get the right length. You're going to need to trim off the um, stitching that was from the armhole seam. And then you would have the n another one of these and make a pair for your mask. So here is our rectangle that's smaller than the other one. And again, we want the t-shirt grain, the up and down um, direction of the t-shirt to be going this way. We want the wrong side up. And we're going to fold this now just in half because it's not wide enough to do the envelope fold. And this actually makes it almost five inches wide, so that's nice. And it's okay. This has a screen print. I put um, the side that has the least amount of screen print, this will be my back. And then we just need to fold, uh, we're going to fold over the sides, um, probably about three-fourths of an inch, and then you're going to sew about five-eighths of an inch away, just like we did with the double fold, but now it's only a single fold. And then you need to put your tie in using the the um, safety pin, and you can go in this direction, go up, and then we need that halfway point of the tie to be at the top, and the top for us is where that uh, opening is, so make sure you pull and get that halfway point there. And then you're going to sew across the top of that casing to secure the ties. And then you need to knot the ends. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can do this same um, stitching but by hand using a whip stitch. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So you need to take your needle, this is the way I thread my needles. I call it my no-knot method because there's no knot required at the end and I know not how I learned this or if I came up with it on my own. But you fold over the thread and put both of the ends through the needle. So the ends are over here, the cut ends, and the folded loop is at the bottom where your knot would be. So I'm going to fold over my casing, and then I just need to go in and make a stitch, and that where that loop is at the end, just put my needle through, and there. I don't need a knot, I just loop it through. And then to do a whip stitch, you just... Put your needle in horizontal, perpendicular to where the hem is, like this. We're just sewing right over that cut edge. So that's what it looks like on the other side. And the nice part about this stitch is that it stretches with the fabric. So you stitch all the way up that side, make it look like this, and then we also need to stitch down the um, tie at that top. So just sew through the tie and the casing so they're both secured. And then to finish off, just take your needle through the stitching and make a little knot. 
and then I'm going to go through my stitching again and put my needle through the loop and knot it again. Oops, I think I missed that. There we go. And knot it, and then I'm going to put my needle into the casing. Travel a bit in the casing and then take it out. And then I'll trim it down here so that tail of thread is inside the casing. And there, you can make a mask just by hand sewing. Next I'm going to show you how to make the N95 face mask cover. So we'll start with a t-shirt and just remove the sleeves but keep the hem on because we're going to use the hem of this uh, t-shirt as the hem, the top hem opening of the mask layers. So here are the sleeves. You need to cut open the side seams and then you need to place both sleeves with right sides together and then you need to make sure that their top points are level with one another and their hems are even and then refold them along the highest point and then we're going to cut the edge of the sleeves parallel with the fold. Even if the hem is angled down, you want this, uh, these two edges to be parallel. So here are some sleeves cut depending on the size of shirt that you have. Uh, you want to have the width down here at least six inches. If not, six and a half is better, especially if you have a thicker t-shirt. And then the height that you want, you want at least seven and a half inches tall, um, up to nine inches tall. And you remove the sides first, and then you also need to um, trim off the tops to give a nice curve and make sure that all edges have the exact same shape, so trim off those tops get your shapes. And if you're going to use two different colors, um, one for the back and one for the front, you can have that back piece narrower like this and the uh, front piece wider like that too. And even move this down so that the back is shorter than the front, but it would probably need to be trimmed there to be even. Um, and then you can use this for the back and that for the front of the cover. So what you have here when you unfold it, this is going to be the pattern for cutting the masks from the rest of the t-shirt, which I'm going to show you how to do next. So I'm going to cut more mask covers out of the rest of the t-shirt. I've taken the t-shirt, laid it flat, folded it in half vertically with the sides and the bottom edges even. Remember we have not cut off the bottom hem of the t-shirt this time because we're going to use that hem as a part of the cover. So we're going to cut our first set of masks out of the bottom. Just lay your mask pattern even with the bottom edge of the t-shirt and then cut that curved seam and then cut the folds of the t-shirt to get the sides and now you've got four layers, two uh, double layers because each uh, cover is going to take two layers so this makes is going to make two covers. The next set of mask covers we're going to cut out we need to add on a hem so cut straight and then have the bottom hem of the sleeves at least a half an inch if not more away from uh, this cut edge and this will be we'll press this over and make a new hem 
and cut that curve there, cut the sides, you'll get two more masks worth out of this. So this is a double layer from the sleeves, that's one, two and two, that makes five. So we need five strips for the ties, so cut these one inch wide, and some might be loops, some might be strips that we pull, and we'll use those to make the ties for the covers. Now when we start sewing the mask covers, we need to take those masks, layers that didn't have a hem, and sew that hem first. So you need to press down that hem edge, and then sew using a zigzag stitch so that it can stretch. So you'll have four layers that don't have that hem, so you need to do that on all four layers. Then you need to put your layers together with right sides together. So I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. You can either use two layers cut the same width from the same fabric, or you can use a layer of one fabric and a layer of a different color. And then it, this would be ideal if you had a smaller t-shirt that wasn't as wide that you cut the maximum width you could, but it's going to be narrower than you need it to be. And we could use um, the outside to make those casing folds. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make the pattern using this, but again you can double up with the exact same size pattern and do the same thing as well. So you want to put, if you are doing two different layers, you just want to make sure that that bottom curve is the same and it's okay if this, this is going to be my back layer, the smaller one is lower than the top layer. Uh, that will be just fine. So you want to put your right sides together, so you can see my hems are finished right sides together and then you want to sew a quarter inch minimum seam, maybe three-eighths of an inch would be better and then turn that inside out and press press that seam and then we're going to fold in our casings to make a double fold. If you do are using the exact same fabric and size for both sides, fold it in this way, and just fold double the same way. That fold is going to end up being about three-fourths of an inch wide and you're going to sew it at about five-eighths of an inch away from that fold. So that's the finished casing. Then you would take your safety pen, pen through your tie, and go in through and put the tie into the casing and just like with the other mask we want to pull the strip down, the tie down so that halfway point is there at the top of the cover and then the last step is to sew across the top of that casing to secure the tie and to knot the ends. And then you have your mask cover with your little pocket or it can have that back side so you always can clearly tell the front from the back. There you go. To put the cover over a mask this is a N95 style mask that is similar to the one my sister, who is a nurse, wears. They come in different shapes, but this is the, her shape. So this mask cover is, decide, is designed to fit over this wider mask. You want to take the top edge, that's the straight edge, put it over the nose, and then tie those, back, those top ties in the back of the head. Next, you want to gather up the sides to fit your face and then tie those bottom ties at the back of your neck.
When you're done wearing it, you just need to find those knots and pull to untie. I'm going to use a bow tie or a slip knot that's easy to untie. Take your mask off, put it in a safe place if you're going to rewear it, or put it in a bag to wash it. And then after you're done touching it, make sure you wash your hands clean. To sanitize cotton face masks, we need to wash them in very hot water and dry them on hot. It is heat that will help kill the germs. The best way to do that is if your machine washer has a sanitized setting. That means it's washing in extra hot water, ideally up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and for a long time, roughly two hours. It appears that high efficiency front loading machines work a little better than top loading machines. It's because some of those machines might only get up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, so they don't get hot enough to kill off all the germs. I also recommend using a fragrance free detergent, especially if you're donating these masks. And if you don't have a machine washer or it doesn't get hot enough, another option is to sanitize them in boiling water for 10 minutes. You need to machine dry them on hot until they are absolutely totally dry. You want no dampness left that can grow any germs. For a tip, if you're washing a bunch of masks in the machine, make sure you untangle any ties before you start drying so that big clump doesn't stay wet and the mask should not tangle again during the drying process. Do not microwave. It is not as effective at killing the germs because you would have to microwave it for a long time and if you microwave a cotton mask for a long time, it will catch on fire. So after masks are sanitized and dry, use clean hands or gloves and place those masks into a clean Ziploc bag and then seal it closed. If you can't sanitize to clean your masks, you could try just quarantining them, keeping them in a bag or a secluded place like the trunk of your car and not touching it or using it for days. It might help, I won't guarantee you will kill off everything, but it's better than nothing. So here's some additional other tips to help reduce your contamination. This is very important because a wearing a dirty cotton mask can actually be worse than wearing no mask at all, especially in a healthcare setting. Um, you must properly sanitize these masks after each use. So if possible, always put on a clean sanitized cotton mask. It's best to have several clean masks stored in a clean sealed Ziploc bag. That's why it's nice to have this tutorial for making them from t-shirts because you can make a lot of them. Always wash your hands before putting on a mask and especially after taking it off. And after you take that mask off, put it directly into a Ziploc bag for dirty or used masks to sanitize later. Or if you do have to reuse it, Store it carefully for your own needs to make sure that you don't contaminate yourself when you put it back on. If you're putting a filter in the pocket, make sure you wash your hands before and after touching it and throw it out after you've used it. Use only new or clean non-woven cloth as filter. Each uh, uh, HEPA vacuum bags seem to work best. Uh, dried wet wipes also work. Uh, clean rags or sewing interfacing or tissues, any kind of non-woven cloth that you can put in as an added filtration. But oh, use them only once and then replace them with another new clean one because they cannot be sanitized after use. And store all those filters that you have in a clean sealed Ziploc bag. Be careful, do not put in too much filtration. You need to be able to breathe. That's why the cotton masks are nice because you can breathe through them easily. Um, if you put too much filtration in, it can be hard to breathe. That's why people with heart disease should not wear face masks. Now you only need to wear a face mask if you're working closely with other people. Right now that only means essential work and errands. People that work in healthcare or nursing homes or if you're going out to get groceries. Thank you for watching. You can find more info about how to fa make face masks at maketodonate.org. Thank you. Bye.